You know, wine has to be probably the most absurd thing on planet Earth. And that's what I learned from my recent conversation with Uncle Frank, or Frank Drinks Wine on Instagram, an amazing Instagram creator. Wine literally is just fermented grape juice. But that said, it is culturally loaded fermented grape juice. It has uh, terroir specificity and expression. It has the ability to, to translate sites and soils with, I guess, crystalline expression if, if made very well. But it really is quite absurd how much of the world has sort of, you know, wrapped itself up in wine. And I think that's a healthy thing to realize. I think it's healthy to realize that sometimes maybe wine isn't changing the world or maybe some wine kind of is. And to be able to distinguish the lines between them and also the wines that sort of blur the lines and, you know, fizzy them up together. Frank Drinks Wine, this amazing Instagram creator, really showcases absurdity in comedy. And comedy is a really fantastic way for, I guess, people to look at themselves and laugh, which I'll say from an Australian perspective, that's kind of a part of our culture is the ability to just kind of laugh at ourselves and don't take ourselves too seriously. And I think that's a very, very healthy thing, especially when you're highlighting something that is so financially loaded. A lot of people have spent a lot of money on what is in fact just kind of fermented grape juice. And what's really important to remember is why? Why would people get so wrapped up in this? Anyway, I think you guys are going to really enjoy uh, this conversation that I have with Uncle Frank because he struck me as being uh, as if I could grab every single one of our Discord members and kind of fuse them into one individual who just has this sort of whip crack intellect and an ability to be able to understand I call them like the rules of wine. Wine, the wine world works to its own kind of set of rules and he really understands them. He kind of pokes and prods at these rules and bends and subtly breaks, uh, you know, a lot of these into what is what I believe to be and feel that is the best meme channel for wine on Instagram, Frank Drinks Wine. And of course, that isn't overshadowing the fact that he is actually an exceptionally good taster himself. You'll find out in this episode. I hope you enjoy. Jump in the comments. All the feedback. We love it. Frank drinks wine. You've got to go give him a follow if you already haven't. The la the latest video you guys did, the blind tasting. And then I want to I want to say, um, you know, it's um, was it Noah that called out a lot of the you know he did the best in that in that the last video you guys dropped. Oh man, he's he's, he's palettes. Awesome. Yeah, the W the, the we said training must have helped, right? Because he's he seems to be uh, sure. getting really really good at blind tasting right now. He's really good doing the grip, you know. It's not this, then it's this. It's not this, then it's that. You know, he's very good at doing that. But the Fiano and yeah. Chardonnay is funny, right? Because I, I got introduced to Fiano uh, more than a few years ago, and from a texture point of view, I think there is some. It's also a very neutral grape, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? It's kind of a neutral grape, right? It has some of a a little bit more power, a little bit more sort of body, and it could. You can you can take a little bit of oak if you wanted to throw it on it. I, so I mean, I feel like is mm. it the Italian version of the Chardonnay, or it might? Do, would you agree with that? Or uh, sort of, sort of. So I, I actually like to think of it a little bit like the Italian version of Riesling, um, or oh, I mean, okay. probably more accurately, like the Italian version of Chenin Blanc, uh, because it has okay. really sort of broad waxy texture and it has outrageously yeah. like can be like searingly high acidity um, and yeah. a really sort of broad. You know, when I when I look for like what is going to be a truly sort of noble, great, amazing yeah. white wine variety, I look for something that has a width and breadth of style within the one variety. Mm. And that's where Chenin Blanc really like takes everyone to town or Chardonnay takes everyone to town because it's like we can that's do right. sparkling, yeah, yeah. we can do, you know, heavily oaked, we can do reductive lean sort of examples. Yeah. Same thing with Char uh, Chenin Blanc as well, which takes it to another whole level. Let's do sweet yep. wines. Let's do like vitratized yep. wines. Let's do things that yep. are like really long aging um, yeah, you know, Riesling's also, you know, known as being a, a great communicator of terroir in this this manner. And our sort of our yeah. hypothesis, sure, this yeah. argument um, that we sort of posit is that Fiano, more than than most other white varieties that have been presented to us beforehand, has that capability yeah. as well. Um, sure. It does suffer this sort of like Italian white variety thing, mm. like Vermentino, yeah. Garganaga, like they all kind yeah. of a bit nothing. Uh, yeah. you know, there are notable examples of really great examples of say Gargano and Suave that that's fine. Yeah. But uh on the hands of the majority, are there truly great Gargano vineyards? 
mm, yeah, you know, not as much as there are truly great Chardonnay vineyards that we've all sort of globally recognised. Um, sure. Another one sure. that I would actually say would put up there that we should be taking very seriously, and this is the other thing. I, we're obsessed with hot climate fringe winemaking. The rest of the world's yeah. interested in cold climate fringe winemaking. And so Definitely. I'm interested, how can we make truly great wines on the hot fringe? Because that's where we are. Yeah, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Caracante. Caracante, mm. what I've seen from Caracante is truly incredible. And it makes me absolutely excited. That's a Spanish it. variety. Um, am I right or wrong? Is that Spanish? No, that Sicilian. A... Sicilian. Oh, Sicilian. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's one of the it's one of the the uh, you know more volcanic um, soil loving. Don't I can't uh, remember the last varieties. time Powell one. Yeah. But obviously when you're in Man. Italy, there's a thousand varieties and and then and I think that's also another thing. It's kind of like you know if the French kind of just figure out. I mean, the French are the best at marketing. Don't you agree? Like they kind of figure it out mm. one time ago mm. and just say, hey, you know, like hey, it. Pinot Noir, they you win. know, like uh, Chardonnay is Burgundy, you know, like uh, Cabernet yep. Merlot, you know, it's Bordeaux. You know, they kind of figure that yep. out and. People just know like, oh, yeah, that's what that is. But when you go to Italy, it's almost kind of like there's, there's a thousand varieties. And it, it's uh, it's it's just almost kind of confusing, you know, for, for people kind of getting in. I think the reds in Italy have less of that, that problem because for some reason, kind of you got your Sangiovese, you got your Nebbiolo, you know, you got your the major, you know, the, the, the big hitters. But when you get into the whites, it's almost kind of like it's a long list. Like, which one would you want to, you know, which one do you want to talk about? It's just a long list of it. Well, yeah, well, that's the, the sort of the hard thing about white wine making is it's predominance of France and Germany and pretty much yeah. nowhere else. Um, and therefore, yeah. everyone just grabs whatever the French and the Germans do and they plant it into new world countries because the market will accept them. Um, yeah. You know, not realizing that the vast majority of every other country is technically, I don't know, say every other country, every other, I guess, new world country uh, is yeah. warmer. Um, you know, mm. so you're always going to have good. these more overblown, overripe sort of characters. The interesting yeah. sort of like area that I'm like, like every time I go to like a big show like Pro Wine where you get to see like a whole world of wine all in one sort of like spot. And we just came back. Last time I came back and I was yeah. like demoralized about Australian. I was like, Australian wine has a massive problem and it kind of helped made us double down on this channel. Um, sure, yeah. Like someone's got to, someone's got to champion Australian wine because it ain't, it's not Australia. Um, yeah. The, this time, dude, Eastern Europe. What? the hell yeah. is going on with yeah. Eastern Europe. We've got like Ukraine, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovenia, oh, wow. Croatia, okay. all the Shahs, all the Yars. Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, utterly amazing. Probably the best wow. uh, Slovenian Sauvignon Blanc. What's going on? <laughs> it is just next level yeah. delicious. Like I've just never seen, I didn't even know. I, was, I went there on a whim. <laughs> and also, by the way, the packaging, because these producers yeah. have nothing to lose. You know, right, they're right. like, yeah, they're playing around with packaging that just is is fun and that's fascinating. And oh Great man, yeah, I reckon yeah. that'll be the next big big thing that'll happen is all old sure. world countries will start and continue to jack up their prices on the basis of, of their marketing see. their place and their places. Yeah, everything from Austria uh, and to the east, I guess, huh? Yeah, it's interesting. Totally, I mean, Austria, totally. and for I, me, I'd I say still feel so underrated. Austria, uh, you know, Rieslings, uh, you know, Grunewald in there is like just even. I want to say, but I've, I've, I've Dude. even had some pretty amazing Sauvignon Blanc from Austria, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I, they can make amazing wines in Austria. Amazing, yeah. Oh, yeah, huge, and into Northern Italy as well. Like that's like the aromatic yeah. whites of Northern Italy. I find really sort of fascinating, where you sort of go get, yeah. get like, I like to say think German efficiency, like German thinking with an Italian heart. Um, yeah. So you get these like pristine, like pinpoint perfect white wines that just kind of have. Yeah. There's like a, a warmth yeah. to them, like not an exactly alcoholic warmth, but like about. an actual like soulful warmth. Not saying that the Germans aren't yeah. soulful, but so there are stereotypes here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's let's get into it. Like, let's I, I'm, in, yeah, let's I, get into it. <laughs> I'm stoked that you <laughs> yeah. agreed to this interview because I'm sure when it hit your inbox, you must have been like, "Why me? Like, why? Like, wh yeah, what I, are we talking I, about here?" Actually, I wasn't. I wasn't that surprised. I was surprised that you reached out to me. I, I've been following, you know, your channel, uh, you know, for a, a few years now, and I've always been a big fan. I, you know, I know that, uh, you know, you guys are one of the the best at you know, blind tasting. Uh, really make the content, you know, geared toward you know the younger generations. But what I really love about you guys is that there's nothing pretentious about you guys. You know, even when it comes to the blind tasting side, I gotta, I gotta be honest, like. Uh, I see a lot of like 
you know, uh, Hollywood, when it comes to blind tastings, you watch these movies, some one, two, three, 500 or whatever they're on. And it's just for me, I mean, I, I don't think it's a very honest representation of what blind tasting really is like in the real world. And I'm just so happy that you know you guys decided that, hey, enough is not, you, you guys want to put that like the, the real, the real stuff out there. And I've been a fan of your channel. So when you reach out to me, it was kind of like, wait, like, I'm just, I'm just a regular dude, you know, like making some funny memes, you know, like making some like wine reviews. And uh, so this is actually the very first, let's call it like uh, a, a real interview I'm doing. Like, <laughs> like I have no idea which is going to go, but, but this is, this is the first time for me, <laughs> but let's go. Well, that surprises me because you've been doing this for like a fair while. Like you've been yeah. um, uh, like at this for like five or six years yeah, um, Instagram, and you say you're yeah. And you say you're a number yeah, cruncher Instagram. by day. Yeah. But you're so doing like memes at night. Guy. Yeah, I'm a corporate finance guy, right? So just, and I, I, um, just, just like, a, like a lot of people are like, why is my hobby? And so how I got into social media really was about, I don't know, like five, six years ago. And I probably was like in the middle of the night, I, I was telling my wife, like, gosh, honey, like that wine from two days ago, like, did you smell that? Like, and I started like going geeky. And usually she was like, kind of going along she's like yeah 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 you know my, my wife has a great palate by the way but but i think she just got really tired that night and she's like okay let's just go to sleep right i don't want to talk about this anymore and i i think my ego felt a little hurt so i was like you know what I, I've, heard, I've heard about this thing called instagram i'm gonna go download it and i bet you there are people on there that's kind of like me and that really just started it. that was the beginning you know I, I downloaded instagram and my gosh it was like a whole world of winos and there was just a lot of people kind of like me like just helplessly hopelessly kind of like infatuated with everything wine and uh i got to meet a lot of you know great people but in the beginning my channel was really just kind of like hey you know here are all the wines i'm drinking i'm reviewing them and here are my notes and then later on you know i try to make make it a little funny because for me i feel like you know at the end of the day like people want to be entertained right so i want to make my stuff a little bit funny and then at, at, at one point i got into my minivan i made some uh wine reviews in my minivan because i got two little kiddos and uh and that kind of like, you know, people like that. So, you know, and it just kind of evolved with the Instagram and Instagram is almost kind of like the perfect uh, tool for winos sharing wine content, because in the beginning it was just pictures and hashtags. And later on there were reels and the different things that you can do. And, you know, so now it's like all making memes. And I, I just started making memes because, you know, I thought the world seeing enough bottles of DRCs and, you know, kosher Dury and I, I can't, I don't have that kind of money. And they don't need to see another picture from me. And then, uh, so I was like, well, what can I do to make people uh, feel more, uh, you know, interested, entertained? So I was like, let's make some, crack some jokes, right? Because you know, like the wine world is absurd. You know, the people like myself, like how deeply we get into it and then all the nerdy, geeky details that only we care about. It's absurd, right? There's so many things that's absurd. And, and absurdity is in nature, by nature funny. So I was like, people, you know, we got to do this. So I just make it into some memes and uh it kind of just took off and so now i i still do a lot of uh you know reviews i try to do once a week but i also make a ton of memes and you see and people seem to 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 like it and i'm glad you know are you finding more like joy out of the like the wines that you consume or the memes that you get to sort of create oh uh that's interesting i you know i don't know i never really thought about it that way i i will say you know the, the whole thing about the memes is that it's the most, it's one of the most genuine, honestly brutal thing that you can do for, and I say this meaning like, I'm obviously I'm not like a comedian, you know, by trade or anything like that. But when a joke falls flat, that landing, it hurts. But what I love about it is it's so real because how much of social media is just fake, right? Followers, uh, likes and clicks or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of that is all fake, right? And people are fascinated, infatuated with like trying to look better than the next person. And, and for me, I just kind of want to see like, it's almost like a little game, like a little challenge, you know? Can I make a funny meme that is, uh, you know, that hit a nerve, right? And sometimes the jokes fall really flat. And in those moments, even though I feel like, ah, oh, geez, you know, like that, that, you know, felt a little bit embarrassed, you know, nobody liked it. But at the same time, it's like, it's refreshing because it's, it's real. Like that little failure just makes me kind of appreciate when I do have a meme that goes into the hundreds of thousands of views or sometimes even millions of views. And I feel like, why well, did that? You know, it's like, I don't know. I, I'm, 
my model in life has always been like, let's keep it real. I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just want a real self. That's all. I'm I, I, I I kind like of an absurd person. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. The, the, the thing that struck me was um, the diet, sort of this sort of dichotomy between um, uh, when I look at, say, other meme, uh, wine meme sites or yeah. pages, yeah. and there are, there are a fair few uh, going around. Yours is the one that stands out the most because, firstly, I just say straight off the bat, it's been the most funny. It's been the most consistently funny. Um, Thank you. But it's yeah. really like the, the memes hit really hard. Um, like another another page that's probably worth noting that I sort of followed for a while and then sort of kind of went off a bit was Resting Som Faced, uh, which I thought was firstly killer name for an Instagram uh, yeah. you know, uh, satire. Um, yeah. But it was it, it was very specific and then it became really hyper specific and I kind of like started to not relate to them so much. Interesting. But yeah. yours, yours are like... I don't understand how a person outside the industry who yeah. is a number cruncher by day, how do you yeah. how do you conceive of these things? Like how do you get the yeah. knowledge? How like okay, you've so, never worked have you worked in the industry before or I never? Have, I, I have, yeah, so I so here's the thing, like during the pandemic, I think it's like twenty twenty, you know, twenty twenty one, uh, you know, like a lot of people there was a lot of just like, you know, thrashing around in the world, right? And then uh, you know, I kinda went through a phase. So I, I've been up to, up up until that point, I'd just been a corporate finance guy, you know, all my life. But then I decided that, hey, let me go try this, um, you know, wine industry thing for a while. So I actually did join a wine industry. So uh, there's a very, um, you know, well-respected independent, you know, wine shop kind of close to where I am called Wine Exchange, you know, shout out to Wine Exchange. And uh, I joined them for a little bit over a year. Uh, when I was there, I did pretty much everything except for working in the warehouse. And shout out to everybody who work in a warehouse because those are the unsung heroes. If you go into any wine related business and you're watching people moving the product, those people, they deserve the highest respect, but they matter, man. Digress. Yeah. I don't want to digress too much. So I got into the wine uh, retail business. So uh, I did a little bit of everything, you know, marketing, branding, you know, even the, you know, the financials, the numbers, uh, you know, the profit aspect. And, uh, but the, the best part is, uh, wine tasting, uh, as a buyer. So I sat down with, uh, Kyle Meyer and Tristan, uh, the two, uh, owners of the, the business and almost, you know, daily I get to taste, um, hundred plus wines, right? So I don't know the exact number, but it's going to be in the thousands where, you know, in the short, like, I don't know, 14 months, 15 months I was there. So I've tasted plenty of wine. Uh, this is around 2021, 2022. And. So I do have a little bit industry experience. I have since left the wine industry and gone back to, you know, my old gig, you know, just office corporate finance kind of thing. And uh, so I left about almost two years ago. So, I mean, like you're saying, like, you know, you say some of the memes kind of hit kind of hard. It's because I do kind of have a lot of, you know, some, some of that inside perspective. You know, when you're kind of, you know, in the biz, you, you do see a lot of the not so glamorous practices and, uh, and, and also kind of the, the BS, you know, of the marketing and all that stuff. And, and you know, it's, it's hilarious. That stuff is absurd. That stuff is hilarious. And I'm just glad that people find the memes, you know, even relatable. So. Well, when you were tasting uh, sort of wine so much of the wine exchange, which I didn't know that's, that's awesome that you got that kind of experience as well. Like, yeah. is there, did you develop a love for any particular wine? Do you have like a really broad palette or is there just like, where does yeah. your heart actually lie? Uh, you know, one thing that I kind of have taught me, so I, I kind of, I think I'm, I think what I'm about to describe is probably pretty typical for a lot of wine lovers, right? So I, you, when you first kind of fall into it, you sort of gravitate toward the stuff that's heavily marketed, right? So in America, in California, where I am, it would be the Napa Cabernets, right? And uh, nothing wrong with them, but, you know, they tend to get a little bit more, you know, monolithic, kind of boring one note after a while, right? So you do that. And then the next thing, as you kind of graduate and, you know, if you're, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're making a little bit more money, all of a sudden now you're interested in champagne, burgundy, you know, Barolo, you know, kind of like the rest of the world, because you want to seem sophisticated. You want to, you know, not, you know, you, you just want to look more cultured. So now you're drinking this stuff, right? And then, uh, but then, you know, Things are getting crazy, you know, like uh, I was making, I made a meme the other day, you know, like nowadays uh, a Bourgogne Rouge from a reputable producer is like hundreds of dollars, you know, it's ridiculous, you know, pretty soon they're going to charge their Aligote like 200 bucks, you know, it's, 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 it's that kind of like situation, you know, in the wine world. 
Uh, but then when I got into the wine industry, what I've learned is uh, for better or for worse, I've sort of kind of reconnected with the really basic love for wine. And when you are there sitting there, you know, sort of as a buyer and people, the reps bring you all kinds of wines across the world, across different price points, uh, you started to kind of, you know, realize that, hey, you know, like there's stuff that's like from, uh, you know, parts of Italy, you can't even pronounce that's asking, you know, like $22 retail, that is bringing tons of thunder. All right. And then you could be, you know, in the same lineup, you just drank like, you know, three bottles ago, something from Bordeaux, like, you know, 200 bucks or something like that. And then you start wondering, like, you know, it, it, that's what kind of sort of, I got a re-education almost because when you're there tasting it through, and then at that point, it's almost kind of everything being equal, right? Everything is kind of in front of you. You're just kind of assessing it and stuff like that. So I love that aspect and, uh, and, uh, you know, re sort of got, got like, I'll, I'll, you know, get into, you know, obviously you're in Australia. So one thing that kind of, uh, you know, I opened my eye was that how many great wines are coming out of Australia. And here in America, we kind of have a problem of people just not buying a lot of Australian wines, especially the, the more expensive stuff, right? I think I may be simplifying it, but I think a biggest con contributor is the, the yellowtail effect, right? Like, you know, people are kind of so, you know, from a branding point of view, uh, they've been so successful. However, it kind of just made Australian wine overall seems kind of like massive manufactured, right? And, uh, but mm. I've had, but, you know, but that's sort of a bias as an American, you know, buyer consumer. And I've had some wines from Australia, they're just killing it. You know, like some of the wines that, uh, like later on, I, I think maybe, you know, I can kind of give some recommendation of some of the, the wines and stuff like that. But some of the, you know, Pinot Noirs, like Chardonnays, and, and you know, I know you and, you know, your company, you guys are uh, looking into the Italian varietals and stuff like that. But I just think like, yeah, like, but sorry, I, I digress a lot. But yes, like that's kind of one thing that I kind of learned from, you know, getting into the industry that I don't have any clear favorites. I really don't, you know, I it's because it's, it's almost like I just love wine. And I love that all the sort of ongoing things about wine. Wine is like a living thing. It's just constantly evolving. There's not really one thing. Even if you love a great wine, that saying is so true. Like there's only great bottles of wine. There's no great wine because you could be drinking like two, whatever, like whatever you want to say, 1949, like, you know, Bhutan or whatever. One bottle can be vinegar. The other bottle is amazing, right? So I, it's just, that's what I love about wine. It's, it's humbling. It's all changing. So What's so fascinating to me, I love the fact that you love wine so much. It's like, it's yeah. really, really, really quite evident. It's almost like I'm having a conversation with all of our Discord members fused into one human being. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and, and I think that makes you very relatable. I think that's the reason why you're like your memes are so, like they connect so hard with wine lovers is you, yeah. you literally ha have, you, you said every kind of thing that I would have expected a person who truly like, like you, we're not making this up. You seriously love wine. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I really do. I think uh, uh, it, it's ironic because, uh, you know, a lot of Asian people kind of, you know, have this uh, thing where you, you drink and your face turn red. Like I, I do. You know, when I, when I drink, you know, three sips, I turn into a lobster. Right. And uh, so all my life growing up, I've never been really much of an alcohol drinker. Right. And uh, I didn't really think too much about it. So when I first kind of got into wine, it was like, I don't know, 15, 14 years ago, I was at a wine tasting. And uh, I, at that time, I thought all the wines are made from the same grapes you can buy from the grocery stores, you know, those Concord grapes or whatever. I thought that's every single wine is made from that. I knew nothing about wine. But then I was making a joke because I was at this fancy wine tasting. I, I was like kind of cracking jokes. I was trying to be the funny guy because I knew nothing. And then the guy behind the counter, his name is Cristal, he's, he's, a, he's a French person uh, working in the United States. I don't know what I said, but he must have thought like it was interesting that I made those notes, those comments. Then he went to the bag and he brought, brought something like he was being putting away some, I don't remember the exact vintage, but something maybe like a 15 year old plus Pomerol, you know, from, you know, from Bordeaux. And then he opened it and he, he decided to kind of share with me and everybody at the, the I, I remember like I was in my, in my, in my twenties, I knew nothing about wine really. And when I drank it, it was just like, there, there are parts in my brain that just like, you know, just kind of exploded. And then they're, they're like flowers blooming my back. I don't like people. I never really watched the comic, like the drop of God or whatever, but I've seen a couple images where it's so ridiculous. Like he smelled a wine and the flowers are booming. And then the comments are flying. The moons are crashing into each other, whatever. 
but it was kind of <laughs> like that for me because it's like you're telling i was telling crystal on that i was like you're telling me this is made from from wine like this alcohol here i was like i cannot taste any alcohol there's mm. i don't smell alcohol i don't taste alcohol i don't like the i don't like alcohol but this is just delicious and then i was like i'm getting so much right like yeah the fruit you know blackberries and all that stuff but then i was like i was just throwing random stuff out there because i'm chinese ethnically you know i grew up in in, in asia i was like i was like i was getting like you know, like uh you know, black tea. I was getting like, you know, like these, uh, uh, I probably even mentioned something about, you know, a horse on in the barnyard somewhere because there's probably a little bit of bread in there somewhere. I don't know. But, you know, I mentioned <laughs> all those things and, 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 and I thought that I was probably the weird guy, but then he kind of looked at me and he's kind of like, yeah, man, like this is you. Like, I'm so glad you like French wine. French wine is amazing. Get into more French wine. And I was like, oh, damn it. Like, this is like, uh, like, this is ironic. I, I guess I'm going to be in a, a wino. And then I just never look back. It's just been, you know, like uh, I've, the the love and passion for wine has just gotten more and not less since that day. You think you, know, you mentioned this absurdity, obviously fueling like a lot of the humor behind sort of memes. Yeah. Do you think this whole thing, like I, I have plenty of friends who who aren't in the wine industry that that I grew up with that uh, do find the whole concept absurd. Do you find like that people are willing to spend so much on fermented grape juice and collect them from different countries in and of itself, just wildly absurd. I don't, I feel like there's absurd in every way you look at it. I mean, and, and one thing is absurd to a certain person is, is not absurd to another person. And it, it's, it's like, I, I find the whole idea of, of like, like what you're describing, absolutely absurd, right? Like, uh, the, the, the fact that people will be uh, spending that much money after these highly allocated wines at trophy bottles and then, you know, maybe, you know, buy a really expensive wine fridge and then and put it right there and for years and years and aging it and stuff. Uh, that's absurd in, you know, to any normal people, to any normies who are not wine people. That That's absurd, right? Uh, but I think it's also equally absurd for people to get so technical and geeky and almost like a bookworm where you kind of go into all the, you know, technical aspects of winemaking and, and become almost dogmatic about it. And now you start getting political and religious about your technique. And, you know, it, that's absurd. You know, there's so many things that's absurd. And, and I, I find wine to just be this like really interesting thing where it kind of is so massive and big, it can kind of hold all of it at one place. And, and, I don't know. I, I you know, and, and the, it, there's an, also another thing where there's uh, the stuff that the perception of taste, right? Like when you're tasting something and you can smell something, it reminds you of something. But how does that translate to another person and who have a completely different, you know, uh, experience from you? And sometimes it matches up and it's like, it's just like, it's amazing. Like the universe all makes sense. And sometimes it just completely falls flat. And I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I, one thing I kind of learned is I, even though my memes a lot of times are very judgmental, but they're judgmental sort of on purpose to, to make a point to be kind of funny. But if you kind of follow my memes, I almost, you know, I'm an equal opportunity, you know, like meme maker, meaning like I will make fun of the natty wines. I will make fun of all the manufacturer wines, you know, the, the big Napa caps. I will make fun of, you know, the Psalms. I'll make fun of the winemakers. I'll make fun of the people who only drink like the cheap, like five dollars stuff. It's straight right anarchy. It is just straight anarchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, 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 the funniest comments I get sometimes is like these almost like hater comments where people look at a couple memes I made and automatically assume that I'm some I, I'm supposed to be like a burgundy only drinker, which I'm definitely not. And then like they they get very offended if I say one thing negative about some cabernet somewhere with some oak treatment, and then you know then then you know it's funny and then you know vice versa so but it, it's people get so entrenched you know like wine is this thing like it just has a it has a you know it grabs you you know so i don't know i i, I could go all you know all day about this and that's why i said it i feel like memes sometimes is just the best uh almost like uh you know sort of like uh way of sort of conveying an idea that's better than words you know because when you see a picture it's like oh you know it's like you kind of just you know exactly why it's so funny. Yeah. It's funny because I, I guess the best comedy, in, in my understanding, it really kind of challenges the the person who's receiving that to kind of look 
at themselves in a, in a completely yeah. different light or it highlights something about oneself that you, they immediately didn't really kind of consider. Is there like a, a yeah. process to making a meme? Like, do you, do you kind of like go through and see what memes are popular and see how you can interpret them in a wine context? Or do you just see something in it and you're sitting with your family and you just start laughing and you're like, I gotta, I gotta write this down. I'm sorry, but I've just noticed yeah. something that's just so absurd. First of all, Brendan, I thank you. Thank you for almost kind of like, uh, 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 validating my 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 value. I, I'm just I just make memes. <laughs> like, I really do just I really do just scroll through Instagram like everybody else, and you know I get feeds pushed to me, and I see some funny stuff out there while, while I'm on YouTube or something like that. Or maybe I had a thought about some ridiculous stuff, like you know uh, people want you know like an like idea, like I don't know why people want to pay hundreds of dollars for something that's so heavily oaked. And then I will go and look for certain things to piece it together. So I guess basically, no, there's not really a process of how I make memes. Uh, like, for example, like I, I got, when I, when I first left the wine industry, which is about two years ago, and I went back to corporate America, it was a little bit of a shock for me because after spent over a year with people who are in the wine biz and really just talking to people who know their wine, right? Then I went back to corporate America. Now all of a sudden I'm surrounded by my coworkers who all they want to talk about is how much, you know, the $200 Napa caps or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and sometimes people, they're generous, you know, they bring it out. And, you know, I obviously, you know, they, they, it's funny because they will be like, oh, you came from the wine industry. Oh, here, here's a $180 Napa cab. You must love this. And, and I'll drink it. And it's like, it's not bad, but it honestly, it tastes like just tons of vanilla. It's very, very oaky. You know, and uh, they must feel horrible. Yeah, they must feel horrible. I don't tell them. I don't tell them. I actually, I, I don't. It like in real, like in my real life, I actually don't try to be, you know, a jerk about it. So I'll be like, oh yeah, this is good. I mean, it, it, it. I'll tell them that it smells and tastes very expensive, which is true. You know, like it's, it's, it tastes very expensive. But then I, afterwards, I was like, you know, I gotta make a meme about this. So it started bothering me for like a day or two. I was like, this thought in my head, I just need to somehow like get it out of my system. So then I went online and I searched for, I found this cat uh, and he's like crying. His eyes are all watery. I don't know. There are a lot of funny cats on Instagram. So I found a cat. I put the cat on there. Then I found, I, it must be like an Ikea catalog or something like that, where it has like 12 kinds of wood all the, all the way from like, you know, cherry wood to oak or whatever like that. And then I put that as the back image to the cat and then. And then I just put a caption where like, you know, when you spend $200, you know, on a wine and all you can smell is the different kinds of wood or whatever. And people like that, you know, so that's, that's one way I made one meme and the reason behind it. But other times it could just be like some memes where I just thought like, you know, something is just kind of, you know, really funny. And I just, one thing I decided not to do is I, I, I kind of made a conscientious effort to not follow too many other wine meme accounts because what happens is like, uh, I feel like we get influenced pretty easily, right? If I start following other whining accounts, it's almost kind of like I will start to think about those jokes and there may be some overlaps. And so it's, it's, it's almost better if I just kind of just like stay you know, on the island on my own and then, you know, and, you know, so and, it's, it's, it's some, and, and really like some of my, some of my memes, they fall really flat, you know, they fall really, really flat. And, uh, what, what's like any like like what happens when something falls flat? Do you delete it? Do you press on? Do you oh, yeah. like? Yeah. Okay. So I I will delete it if it falls extremely flat, and then I will look at it. I was I'll be like, well, this one's clear. It's not funny. So I will just like you know, let's get it out of the the fees. I don't want to look at it. But there are other times when I will make something that falls really flat, but I still find it extremely funny, and it, and I'll just kind of keep it on there, you know, for myself. And and if has it like kicked it, up like it, later on? Has it has has like mm -hmm. you have you uploaded something and you're like nah, I thought it was pretty funny but no one else clearly did and then like a month later it just kind of blows up. That has happened too. It's weird. Like the the Instagram algorithm. There's something there. I don't know what you know Mark Zuckerberg is doing there. I, I have no idea. But <laughs> but there are sometimes there's certain stuff I put it out there and it's just crickets for a couple of days and then all of a sudden boom it just like blew up and it, it sometimes it will blow up for you know the all the the bizarre reasons as well. So. When I make these memes, uh, some of them I feel like actually quite proud of it, right? Like I, I for example, one of the ones that I actually really liked is uh, I made this thing where there's the uh, Tom Cruise and 
Ben Stiller as his uh, um, a stuntman. And then, the, you know, the, and then Ben Stiller kind of talks about how, you know, he really is just like Tom Cruise. And then I kind of made the whole clip into the, the you know, the, the Cremant de, de Bourbon, you know, trying to tell everybody that, well, he's basically like Champagne, you know. <laughs> and I felt really, really proud of that one. Like that one, I was like, yeah, I did well. And that one's really good. But there are other ones where I, I I've used like... that line so many times, selling wine. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> really? What is it? What is the line? No, the, the whole like Cremant de Bourgogne. It's, it's basically, it's made exactly like Champagne, yeah. but it's like a fraction yeah. of the price. Like, why wouldn't you right. buy it? You know, right, the right, amount right. of Cremant yeah, de Bourgogne that I've sold using just that line alone. And it's just hilarious. Like when that kind of pops yeah. up on the feed, it's like, wow. Yeah, Shit. Like yeah Stiller, that's true. That's, like, that's... I'm basically Tom Cruise, you know, I'm basically the same thing, you know, I walk, you know, and then, uh, but then, so that one, I feel good, but that one actually didn't do extremely well. Like, cause I kind of look at the views. It's like, okay, I think it got to about like 70, 80,000 views, which is, which is really good. You know, like, you know, but, but then there, but then there are this, this, this one meme that I did, which I felt it was very, very almost cheap that I made it. I w I'm not proud of it. So I, I think my cousin is sending a, around some funny video of a little girl and she was like you know like like she was like playing with a goldfish and she put a goldfish in her mouth and, and then the mom got nervous and so the mom squeezed her face and the goldfish you know came out and i just thought that the video was so cute so endearing so then all i did is i just took that video and i just put a caption on the top and say hurry you know someone gives my girl you know some champagne for her sashimi which honestly is a pretty cheap joke like there's nothing there okay i don't feel particularly proud of that one and that one kind of just sat there for a couple of days and, you know, not getting a lot of views. But all of a sudden, Mark Zuckerberg decided that's the best meme he's ever seen. So he's now just like pushing that meme. And that, as of today, that meme has over 10 million views, right? And I'm looking at it. I don't even understand it. And the people who are commenting on it, yeah, it's, so, it's hilarious, Brendan. Like, I actually laugh at it because in the middle of the night, if I go to my Instagram and I, and I try to see, you know, comments from people, and all I see now is just like people on talking about the little girl and, and the fish. And then there's like the animal <laughs> PETA people and say, oh my God, you know, the poor fish. And anyway, what I'm trying to say is no, I don't actually have, I don't have any, actually any idea which, which one of my memes are going to do really, really well and really, really poorly. Uh, so, but that, that kind of back to like, why do I continue to do this? I think I let, I'm, I'm the kind of, kind of person that I really want to be, I read it. I want to know the truth. I, I want to. I want to be close to the real thing, and uh, and and memes are really, really harshly real. Like when you do a good job, they do well. When you don't do a good job, people don't feel obligated to click like. I mean, who cares, right? Uh, and I and the reason I think I love wine so much is there's also the same type of honesty in wine. Now it depends on your palate and it depends on, you know, the person's uh, sort of knowledge. But I will say, you know, if you're if you have a pretty good sense, uh, you will be able to kind of almost taste out, you know, like just from the tasting of it to know, like if the wine was made with attention, with passion, you, you almost kind of can't sort of disguise that. And I think it's one of the reasons why I love wine so much is that, you know, all this thing talk, talk about, like, doesn't matter if it's like, you know, conventional manufactured wines or like the natty zero zero craziness, you know. I mean, somewhere in the middle, you know, people who are low intervention and really take care of their vineyards, you know, like really, really care about showing the sense of place. These wines are going to be really, really enjoyable, even if they're not quote unquote perfect, even though if they're not quote unquote 98 plus points, you know, because they're, they're real, they're genuine. They are a, they're a portal to a place you've never been. It's traveling without getting on an airplane. You know, you really be able to kind of close your eyes and feel that, you know, summer or feel that, you know, year, whatever. I don't know. I'm getting kind of hopelessly romantic. I can be like that sometimes too, but, but that's, yeah, well, that's, the, that's, that's, why... that's the pull of wine though. Like wine is yeah. the great communicator. Like that's yeah. the, that's the reason why, like, uh, on a recent video we, you know, we spoke about, and it's become a little bit controversial is like Chinese martial art. Uh, yeah. like if you, if you good enough tasting wine, you can taste when something's been fucked with. Uh, I think so. You know, and we're going yeah. out and tasting through, say, you know, as we we're talking about before, Eastern European wines. Going, these are like objectively very good wines, and because they're yeah. unknown, they're coming in at a price point that's really attractive. Um, yeah. You know, fascinating to see how a behemoth easily can be a behemoth of the wine industry. China usually 
yeah. you know, seen as as big consumers. Actually, seeing their reapproach to to wine, uh, you know, because their first approach was basically just fueled by we want to be like Bordeaux, we're going to copy everything. Yeah, you know, very part of that culture as well. This sort of rote learning sort of thing, you know, they they became basically little Bordeaux. It's just the yeah. wines didn't look that good. Um, you right. know, but then they sort of had this big reapproach, and it's fascinating for me to watch and taste through because you're like sort of in vino veritas, as the saying goes. In wine, there is yeah. truth. Um, you know, yes. and we're tasting through. You know, wines that make sense with Chinese cuisine, um, mm-hmm. that make sense with Chinese terroir, um, mm. with branding that I, I'm astounded, dude. It was like looking at really finely um, made, like like craft tea. Like wow. I just haven't okay. seen it. Like I, I don't see. I don't know. Maybe because there is probably some sort of weird latent racism inside Australia, which is totally a thing. But like I, yeah. I, I've never really considered China as being a place of of elegance and daintiness, and but obviously that's part of their sort of like maybe design narrative and culture and language. Yeah. Um, and the wines are packaged just so immaculately beautiful, very pretty. And I thought, wow, yeah. that's not what you came from—the big, heavy Bordeaux <laughs> style bottles that are like, yeah, it's like a full, you know, swing one eighty. Mm. And it's sort of each you taste through the wines, you're like, wow, I can taste, I can taste culture here. You know, and yeah, when you sure. take away the people, take away the politics, take away everything, you're just talking about yeah. dirt. And that yeah. that's where we start to see this sort of like at, talking about in a very philosophical way, um, yeah. you know, centers of reconciliation is just sit down, have a glass of wine, try this. You're like, wow, that's, that's, that is grown on the edge of the Gobi Desert on the Silk yeah. Road. That's wild. That is yeah. next level. You know, never, never been yeah. able to experience something like that before. And, and you never will unless you go there or try one of their wines. You know, that's yeah. one of the yeah. beauties of wine. That's, that's interesting. I think, you know, Australia is a lot closer to China than, than the United States. We really see very little, you know, wine coming out of China. There's only two kinds of wine that are coming out of China. The stuff that costs like, you know, $8 and you find them in the Chinese market right next to the, the fish section. And uh, they'll, they'll, you know they, they're usually called the Great Wall or whatever. And I've, I've had those before. They they taste like uh, unripe uh, you know green bell peppers. Not the best. Uh, mm. But then mm. you know you have to because I think in China there was actually a long history of uh, common air, if I'm not wrong. But that, I don't know. That's for another topic. But the other kind of China has been hey James Suckling tasted this. He gave it 98 points and it cost like 500 dollars, right? And those wines probably yeah, yeah, taste yeah. pretty good, but then it's like, what's the point of this? You know, that's not really showing a sense of place. And uh, I used to think like when we talk about terroir, you know, terroir is such an abused word. That's another thing that's absurd. You know, the, the idea of terroir is so absurd, right? Yet you can't just kind of, you know, sort of brush it off and say it doesn't exist, you know. But but so the thing about terroir is like, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's. It's uh, it, it's one of those things that you know we just kind of love about wine. At the end of the day, it, it's about showing the the place, showing the the year, the vintage, you know. But also, I I I think I begin to come around to it. I think terroir actually include the winemaker and the people. I know that's kind of a hot take. Maybe that's kind of meme worthy as well. But uh, but why not? You know, like uh, the winemakers are people. You know, they they eat certain kind of food. They have a certain type of culture palate. You know, they're growing up with and. They, 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 they make wines that they like to drink, you know, so that should be kind of part of the terroir. And I think everything you're describing about China, it sounds like crossing my finger, they're finally sort of like, you know, trying to make wines of importance, which is to show their sense of place. So glad to hear that. Mm. It's a very serious thing. Obviously, you, you know, you cluey up on the, um, on the philosophical side of wine. Are you concerned that yeah. like you're going to be the mean guy? You know, you're the guy that makes the memes or like, are no. we going to respect you for your palate? Because obviously you, you drink, you know, really broadly, you have really great commentary yeah. over wine. Yeah. Are you worried no, that it's just, I... you're going to, your whole life's going to be sort of compressed down to meme guy? No, I mean, it. I, I, actually, look, if I'm not a meme guy, I wouldn't be, you know, here on your channel, you know, talking to you and have this act, you know, like uh, a you know, platform to reach out to on people across the world. No, I, I think, uh, like I said earlier, the world has seen enough pictures of another DRC, another Kosherduri, another Dujag or whatever. Uh, I don't have that kind of bank account, nor do I think that's where I can sort of provide the most value to the world. And if I, if what I can do is just to bring, you know, some kind of laughter, 
you know, some type of uh, laughing at other people, but also at ourselves through the how absurd everything is, then I feel great about it, you know? And then I think at the end of the day, like, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a type of pressure because I did spend that 14 months in a wine industry. And I do think that wine, there's a type of pressure, you know, when you're in there professionally that you do start to feel like, oh, I got to watch what I say uh, because, you know, there are years, right? There are people that may, I, I may offend certain people, right? There's a business aspect of it. There's also a pressure of uh, sort of uh, uh, legitimacy, right? Like you feel like you're at some tasting event and you're not able to kind of sort of taste the same thing that the famous critics are tasting. All of a sudden, you know, your palate is no good or something like that. There's a lot of, you know, pressure there. And as a meme maker, I got, I got no pressure. <laughs> I mean, this, this was so great. You know, like the only pressure that I kind of feel is like sometimes I don't want to go too hard because I don't want to hurt the feelings of, um, you know, some of the, the people who are into wine as much. So lately I've been going a little bit, you know, soft on the, the natty drinkers, but I think I'm going to circle back to it. I mean, I'm going to probably make a little bit of mousy, <laughs> mousy meme. So I think I've given, given them enough break. I'm going to circle back to it because, uh, I, so I love, I love reviewing wine. And, uh, so like, I, I want to maybe just spend this time kind of talk about a couple of bottles. Like I, oh, so this, I'm sure awesome. a lot of people, yeah, this is a domain, uh, you had, and, uh, amazing, amazing Chenin Blanc out of Vouvray. And, you know, they, the funny thing about this is I just made a, I just dropped a review on my Instagram chat channel, Frank drinks wine. And the, the funny thing about that bottle is it costs about like 40 bucks. And if you think about the natty stuff, people are drinking, you know, the, you know, I don't know, like uh, the wild, whatever, like, you know, I can't even, I don't even remember a lot of these French names, the natty stuff that costs like 200, 300, you know, the more expensive, the better, that kind of stuff. And you're wondering, like, people are not drinking this stuff, like this stuff can age for 20 years, you know, like it, it, it just kind of like, I, I, because I'm a meme maker, I feel like I can say whatever I want, you know, and, and I, I just, there's no pressure. I don't feel like I will then some, you know, some guy who have invested in like, you know, 12 uh, natty wine bars, you know, in New York, I don't care. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't care about any of this stuff. So it actually gives me a lot of freedom. So I actually like to be known as the, the wine meme guy, actually. Well, what keeps you motivated? What, what, like, is there any sort of question of kind of going, yeah, cool, Liv, I've kind of done everything that I wanted to do or like mm. what kind of gets you out of bed to do the next one? Or is it just inspiration strikes and therefore it'll keep going as long as you're inspired? I have, I, I honestly have no idea, Brendan. Like, I feel like I, I just do this because I, I just, I just like wine. I feel passionate about wine and I feel very happy that, uh, there are really hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are like-minded across the world. Right. And that really is just about a community. I know it sounds very cheesy, you know, it sounds a little cliche or whatever, but honestly, wine is about community. I, I never really get a lot of enjoyment opening a bottle of like whatever it is and drink by myself. Uh, I'm not an alcoholic, you know, like, you know, I, I like the, the communal aspect, right? I like to drink some wine with friends and use wine as a sort of a conduit of like talking about different things in life, because I think wine is such a, a great imitator of life and life is a great imitator of wine. You know, uh, there's so many things you can talk about wine. You know, you want to talk about Taiwan, you're we're talking, we're chatting about dry farming, you know, like, uh, put some stress into the vines and, you know, make them go into deeper ground. You can talk about how human beings should be the same. You know, if you have a really cushy life, you know, you, you, you know, you, you don't have to work for anything. You're probably not going to, uh, uh, sort of, you know, express your highest potential, you know, human beings. Right. So, I mean, there's so many things, I mean, you can get like very easily, um, you know, overly romantic about wine, but I think it deserves it. I think wine deserves that. Uh, but no motivation. I think I just love wine. I, I, I don't really think the wine, the world needs another wine critic. I don't think the world, needs another, you know, uh, whatever, but maybe another meme maker, you know, just to make people laugh a little bit. I think I do, I do get like, for example, like when you reach out to me, I felt very, very honored, uh, you know, uh, but at the same time, like I, uh, I think I made a meme that, that felt so hard and I hope I'm not getting this person in trouble, but <laughs> I, I made a meme that felt really, really hard. It was a, a Spider-Man, uh, the bad guy in Spider-Man, you know, it was in a boardroom and he stood up and he basically just say like, you know, do you know, like how much I sacrificed this, you know, for this and stuff like that. And then the caption was when, you know, Andrew Luz, you know, in Bordeaux, right bank, 
realized it was not going to be, you know, the 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 top, you know, premier Grand Cru or whatever there because of the politics. <laughs> the people only the, see the, the reason that we fell so flat is because it's such a niche very, very niche thing that you have to, first of all, like Bordeaux, understand the classification system, understand Andrew understand politics, understand what's going on, understand, you know, so it felt, it felt really, really hard. But you know, what's funny is, um, I'm not hundred percent. I think this is the, the person, I think, you know, uh, someone from, I'm just going to say someone from Burgundy from a very, very famous name. Uh, he's the proprietor right there. And he's actually kind of, uh, active, you know, sort of like, you know, on, on social media, just kind of as a bystander. And he actually kind of like, you know, made a comment and just say like, this thing is fucking gold or something. <laughs> and, and that, <laughs> and that gave me, that thing in itself is, is worth like a hundred likes or a hundred thousand views, right? That, that, that I made something, even though it fell so flat, but somebody out there in Burgundy that knows his shit, understand what the meme was about. <laughs> That would be fantastic, right? Like you're just taking yeah. a piss out of Burgundy. Next minute, Ober Verlaine just kind of jumps into the DMs, oh, I, going, "Mate, this is the best." <laughs> I, I, I do, and and you know, so far I love it because I feel like most people, most of the time, people are really good sports. The other the, the, the people can really take a joke, and why shouldn't they? You know, like I make fun of uh, all the, you know, the the expensive like Pinot Noirs. Like in California, there's this like movement where. They take they only need to be seventy five percent Pinot Noir, but they can put a word the label in Pinot Noir on it. And I don't know, Americans mm. just love like, you know, chocolate cupcakes. So then all the Pinot Noirs that are in the grocery market, that's like $50 to $60. So many of them just taste like, you know, mega purple chocolate. They put a bunch of Syrah. I don't know what's in there. Okay. They don't taste like Pinot Noir. They all smell like chocolate, but I make fun of those people all the time. I even tag them, you know, I don't care, but they don't, they never get offended. Right. Because they're too busy counting money. Like they don't care. Like I can make a meme about yeah. screaming ego. I, they don't care. Right. Uh, I make fun of Burgundy about how the prices I've gone, you know, just kind of completely berserk. They don't care. Right. The only people that kind of care are right now that a they're, they're a little bit more on the sensitive side are, are like kind of the natty wine pushers, you know, so they, they, they get really, really like, you know, uh, energized, you know, when you kind of talk about, oh, by the way, I didn't know there's a secret campaign of uh, changing the definition of natural wine to, uh, you know, low intervention i did not know that happened but that that's supposedly i'm just making a joke i mean like these people are like you know the, the definition constantly changing and you know anyways yeah there, there's a lot of it makes for great meme you know contents have you ever considered going to like a longer a longer format like you know in australia we have uh and Luke, this could be a uniquely australian thing because uh we yeah. as a part of our culture really um uh, like to, to be the top of our culture, the top of the pops inside Australia is basically like a satirical news site, for example, is probably the most respected people in our culture. Have you ever considered <laughs> kind of doing, so going beyond memes and going beyond Instagram, actually getting like you know, a full-blown sort of website where you just take the piss out of the oh. wine industry news every week? Mm -hmm. Like a, I will no, subscribe no. to a weekly column. No, I, no, I, I, I have not really considered that because, uh, I know how much time that would really take. For example, I see the work that you guys do, and I know that the amount of coordination, the edits, uh, just you know, just sitting there watching, you know, YouTube down, you know, upload of I don't know however many gigabyte files, you know, things like this. I know that it takes a lot of time, and you know, for me, I feel like I kind of want to do it right or just not do it at all. Like I don't, I I feel like the the longer content. Uh, I'm sure there will be people who are much better suited. I mean, you know, your channel is one of the best, you know, channels out there doing that. You know, like for me, I got two little kiddos, like, you know, I try to balance my life. You know, I try not to get fired at work, try to, uh, you know, not get fired as a husband, <laughs> try not to get fired as a father, and then still do some of the Instagram memes and reviews and occasional interviews like this, you know, but no, I, I, I really, you know, my hats off to people who do that. Cause I, I just think like. The, the content creator, especially the long form content creator, it takes so long, uh, so much effort. It's, uh, it's, it's I think if a lot of people assume like, oh, you know, this, these uh, social media content creators are just you know, all the same. They're just like, you know, not working very hard. That's not true at all. Like, I'm probably not working very hard to making memes, but, but they're like serious content makers are are working plenty hard well that's that, that i suppose that the, is the sort of thing about social media isn't it or like the instagram generation was you only ever got to yeah. see the best and and even then it wasn't even real 
uh, or isn't real. Yeah. Um, you know, you see a very tailored version of what their best looks like. You don't see all the the grimy yeah. bits in between. I guess as we we're talking about before that, it, I, I never really considered that. Um, our I guess, I guess being real on social media with blind tasting. Um, yeah. Is I guess in a sense giving people the comfortability to fail at stuff. <laughs> like oh, we're pretty good I, at failing at things. <laughs> well, no, you guys see. I, Kudos to you guys, because you guys take all the risk, right? Because you have your own uh, winery, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you sometimes, you know, kind of will put a lineup in there. And I absolutely believe that, you know, none of it is scripted. I mean, it's all, you know, genuine. Because I, you yourself was, would just be like, oh, I totally didn't get that one, right? And and what's so wrong about that? I mean, who cares? Like, you know, like, the, the, it's just like I said, you know, yeah, I, I actually really, really dislike the... Uh, I'm going to say this. I'm, I really don't like what the Psalm movies, like the Psalm 1, 2, 3, 500, 5,000, all those movies have kind of done a little bit. They kind of almost mystify, you know, I, it's supposedly like you need to have like be born with this like amazing palette and spend like, you know, 100 hours out of a week or whatever doing this. And then, and then you're supposed to be able to smell down to the vintage, you know, like, I mean, if you can, you know, like that's just, that's just ridiculous. You know, like I, I don't think that's, real at all and but hollywood like to make movies you know and so so i love that you guys are keeping it totally real so when you guys you know when you reach out to my comment i was like oh i know these guys these are these are, these are real cats you know <laughs> you might get a feeling like, like these we... are not real cats i don't i honestly i mean no offense like, i probably just like not even bothered right because i feel like <laughs> like look life is too short to to trying to like play the pretending game i i don't i don't have time for that kind of stuff of course of course. Yeah. And that's, I guess, one of the biggest stroke of brilliances of what we do is this guy called Henry Doyle, uh, who <laughs> who knows absolutely nothing about wine. And people yeah. have been able to watch, literally watch him get better and better and better and better. I'd actually say where Henry is now is where Noah was when we first started the, the channel. And indeed, he probably has a highest strike rate of all of us at the end of the day. Even last yeah. week, I mean, he was picking Fiano, he's picking Nero, yeah. he's picking like these... Who does that? You know, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, and and, and I was saying, I like, don't know. You know go ahead. Sorry, you go. No, I, and and really, I think I think you know, I personally find it kind of boring to to watch people guess the varietals, region, vintage. Mm. All right, I want to see I want to see the misses, and I want to see the misses not because I think it's funny people get it wrong. I want to see the misses because those misses tell you a lot. Right, like you know, if if someone you know actually get confused by between you know, let's say a a Gamay from you know Beaujolais and a uh, a Pinot Noir from Burgundy, there's a conversation to be had right there because some crew Beaujolais don't go through the uh, I believe carbonic maceration. Right? If I if I get this wrong, right? So yeah, they don't go through that. So, so yeah. They're, 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 yeah, they're giving their Gamay the same type of treatment that a Pinot Noir would. And you know what? They sometimes, especially with some age, they they kind of converge they kind of taste the same and you know what it's so much more interesting when someone get it wrong because then you can have a very interesting conversation afterwards like everybody be like yeah. oh Petrus, uh you know 1989 I'm like I, who keeps a shit like five thousand dollars you keep it i don't want to drink it. you keep it yeah <laughs> well i suppose like that's that's the argument that i've always had with the guys i think you kind of go through you know you were re- sort of regaling your journey and an entry into wine before i think the longer and longer and longer you get into it. Like I've, we started in wine very, very young. Um, yeah. And I've had the opportunity to have incredible wines from around the world. And I am, I am one of those sort of like diehard passionates for wine that it's, are you going to be a Grand Cru anything? I'm going to love it. I'm going to enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But I am really excited by, you know, things, the, the unknown, the, you know, Indian yeah. wine, uh, the, the like sort of Eastern European, you know, the, um, I don't really care whether or not someone has this massive ego and can blind taste something, you know, from a glass. Yeah. That's great. But do you, do you like it? Like, is it, yeah. ha, how That's much right. do you like it? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, show no, no, me no, how I, much you like it so I can like it as well. No, a hundred percent. I don't know how, I don't know how we're doing on time. I think I feel like, you know, cause I, cause I can be a talker, but hundred percent because the idea of someone being like a very, very good taster at blind tasting game, to me, it's not as useful as people think it is. And I'll say this, mm. if you cannot communicate it, it, it serves zero purpose, right? 
So Correct. for example, there are people who are extremely sensitive to, let's say, TCA core taint, right? And, you know, sorry for the souls of these people. Like, I, I've met some of these people. I don't even know, like, what's going on with these people. Like, they drink some wine. I was like, this is fine. They're like, no, there's a little TCA. I'll be like, oh, I just feel so sad for you. Like, is your tolerance, is your, <laughs> like, you know, like, is it really that high? We're just full of BS. I can't even tell at some point. But anyways, there are people who are very, very good at picking out certain notes, right? But if these people are not able to communicate and share why something is good, something is bad, and describe it in a way so that someone who's watching it can kind of relate to it, then it really serves zero purpose, right? So I, I really think like, you know, this whole, oh, I'm really good at blind tasting. It's a bunch of like a nothing burger in my opinion. Like I think to be, I will say this though, to be really, really good at blind tasting serves, there's two things that it does. One is, and this is a private thing, is that like you talk about, you know, Noah and Henry getting really good. Yes. To get really good and become a real good taster, you do need to taste a lot of wines and blind is a really great way to go about it. So, but that's a, that's a private thing. You don't need to go out there and brag about it and glow about it, right? Now, there's another part where it's really about evaluation. So as a buyer, right, you really kind of want to understand the, the, the quality of the stuff you're bringing in and you don't want to be so affected by the region, the label and such. There is a purpose for that. But the purpose that a lot of people are showing off these days is kind of like, look at me, I'm some 5,000, you know, I got like, you know, 75, you know, to, you know, like pins on me or whatever. And I can, you know, blind taste all this stuff. That serves zero purpose to the world. We don't need to see more of that. Maybe I'm being very harsh. Maybe I, maybe I gotta go make a meme. No, no, I think it's <laughs> really real. I was actually, cause, cause um, I'm glad you actually mentioned the time because we have actually hit our time. But uh, on that note though, one of the questions I, I, I was dying to ask you is like your yes. advice for other like wine-based content creators would that run along the same lines like making sure that what you're actually offering is a value i don't really know if i have any i i, I to be honest with you I, I don't really find myself to be a uh successful like you know like content creator like i i know i know I, i'm very very honored and very embarrassed that, that, that you, that you, uh, give me this opportunity kind of to even, you know, spend this time. I, I don't actually think of myself as a content creator that really can give any other content creator, any type of advice, but I will say a live advice will be, Hey, you get to live once. Uh, you never know when is your last day. Don't waste your time doing the fakey bakey stuff, you know, like be brave, you know, stand up for what you like and be honest and be willing to fail and that's it like and have a great time enjoy the ride have a great time uh, make other people laugh make yourself laugh well i mean i feel like that's pretty applicable to just life in general you can use that as parenting advice so you can use that as whatever you want it doesn't even have to be social media right i mean i think if everyone took that advice the world would be a much more interesting place to live and better wines people will be making better wines <laughs> absolutely take more risks make better yeah. wines Frank, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for the time. Likewise. Seriously, well, I've got there's so many more questions that I sent through that we didn't even get to because oh, yeah. the chat's just been so good. So, uh, yeah. if anyone is listening in, uh, I'll link up the uh, Frank Drinks Wine Instagram uh, in the description here. You have to follow it if you're into wine. It is every single time. I'm not sure what the routine is. Whether you've got like a once a week or twice a week. Sometimes there's a bit of a flurry, but. It is absolute yeah. gold. I absolutely <laughs> love it when it jumps up on my feed yeah. every single time. Uh, thank Frank, you, Brendan. Thank you thank for the you. opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Bye. And hopefully